Hi everyone, Loser08 here. I'm bored and I'm tired, but I have a lot of things on my mind, so let's get personal. First off, why am I wearing a Corgi Kigurami? Because I am cold and I need some warmth, and this is a really warm thing. Uh, so, I'm pretty comfy right now, if you ask me. No matter how, how stupid and silly I look, I'm, I am comfortable right now but it's been a while it always feels like it's been a while and you know I don't know <laughs> I actually I don't know if you do know but um, it's it it's only been like a month since my last video and I don't really feel like doing the jokey jokey nonsense anymore I don't feel like shit posting anymore Musical humor is, is a thing that I'm not really that fond of, to be honest. It's such a niche thing, and for, for me to really do it over and over again, I really have to be in a fucking mood to do it. But nowadays, when I'm in that mood, I always like have to retract a, I, or, or, either retract a bit or have like an afterthought. It's like, you know what? No, that's not going to be funny at all. A lot of ideas have been shot down by me realizing... Wow, this is some bullshit humor that a, a select group of these fucking, you know, cunts, these asshole teenagers and college students who fucking listen to stupid bullshit would get. Can you imagine a stand-up routine of of some asshole like that? Like, I was listening to a neutral milk hotel the other day, and, uh, <laughs> what's so neutral but a milk hotel? <laughs> It'd be idiotic. That's why they all do hot, hot current events of the year. Speaking of yearly things, let's talk about, let's talk about albums of the year. Let's get personal here, everybody. Let's get let's chat. Let's talk about things. Ah. Spell down. It's stable, hopefully. I I, I want to move, but I can't think of anything. I can't think of a place to go. I can't think of right now, actually, which is why I'm stuttering all the dang time. But welcome to Sleep Simulator, where it's it's where you can sleep with me and we can listen to sleep, you know, nonstop, nine hour stream of dope smoker. <laughs> Anywho, let's talk. Let's talk albums of the year. Let's talk things. Pillow talk with the loser of 08. Um, my current album of the year, my go-to right now, is C Nymphs on the Dry Land. And I like C Nymphs. And C Nymphs to me is like a stripped back, more poppy version of Cardiax. Well, I guess. It's it's playful pop music, which which is something that I enjoy. Not not bullshit PC music pop music I fucking hate bubblegum bass and all that other bullshit if that's if that's the future of music then fucking kill me now before it's too late see them found dry land that's a good album there needs to be a Zola revival honestly there needs to be more of that bullshit I know see them is not a Zolo band it's just it's playful artsy chamber pop music but there needs to be a Zolo revival there's an artist uh, named Jake Tobin, based off of uh, Nashville, Tennessee. He released a really good album this year. I'd probably say top five. Uh, called Sorta Upset, and it's it's just that. It's like super fun, synthy, Zolo music. It's great. It's fun. I recommend anyone, if, if you like Zolo music, then you should check that out. Sorta Upset! Exclamation mark by Jake Tobin. T O B I N. Anywho, besides C Nims and Tobin, there really isn't much I can really say about a lot of music. There's a lot there's, there's some dungeon synth albums I've been that I've enjoyed this year. There's a guy named Ethkelion who's released some good stuff. Galder Age of Legends is a really nice one if you like that type of Tolkien influenced summoning esque music. There's way too many summoning ripoffs. <laughs> I like summoning ripoffs. I love 
summoning tribute bands and ripoffs. I'll fucking listen to Cowed and Brood or Elfer or Lord of the Temple any day. So I'm, I'm a sucker for that type of shit. Um, what else is there? What else is there? Oh, God, there's one on my mind right now. Druid and Forest released uh, a album called Lord Master's Time. Uh, that That's his like first album in years. He released two EPs back in the late 90s, and they were uh, Dungeon Synth EPs. Nothing too spectacular from what I remember from those two EPs, but as mentioned before, I like summoning ripoffs, and Lord Masters of Time is a summoning ripoff, and it's nice, it's good, so shouts out to Druid and Forest. Uh, but there's one on my mind that I'm trying- Oh, god, yeah! Book of Lore Volume 2 by Lord Lovidicus. It's- that's definitely in my top five. I- I honestly can't think of a chronological order in, in whatever the hell is in my top five albums of the year right now. I know number one is Sea Nymphs, but it's- it's scattered at this point. But Lord Lovidicus is- is a pretty prominent name in the current age of Dungeon Synth. It's like him and Erang, and in some cases guys like, uh, who else? Elidor, Sequestered Keep. Abandoned Places. I think Abandoned Places stopped making music last year, I believe. Or that's a question keep. Anywho. Um, yeah, Lord Levy is great. He's a dude from Idaho that makes this... It, he just makes really fluffy dungeon synth. Like, from 2013 to up, he's just been making, like, this really, like, heavy dosage of atmosphere, fluffy dungeon synth music, and it's just fucking great. If you... If you want to get into dungeon synth music and you want to listen to a current artist, like either him or Erang are like the go-to guys. If you want, like check that shit out. If you want to skip all that Mortis bullshit in the '90s, and like in the 2000s, where it's like who who, who was the most prominent one in the 2000s? I always like I I always look at Uruk High as as the 2000s of of dungeon synth because I can't think of anyone else. Like, there's the Midnight Syndicate and the other, the other one from, oh, that was a, Midnight Syndicate and Nox, Nox Arcana, I believe is the name. And they were just making, like, really cheesy classical music. And, uh, uh, neoclassical music. Which, I mean, cheese isn't a fucking, it's, it's not a thing that's not common in, in Dungeon Synth. I mean, it's, it, Dungeon Synth is already, is, is already a cheesy and corny genre, and other, you know, food-based words describe that genre, but they were just making some really cheesy shit, even for the genre. And then there's Lord Wind, I don't know if Lord Wind, I mean, he started out in the late 90s, I believe. So, I guess Uruk High, and it's like 50,000 fucking albums, is, 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 is the fucking thing in terms of, of Dungeon Synth music from that decade. I don't know. Someone someone who knows more about that genre can always correct me on, on who on the on the top fucking guy was in that era, but I once made a podcast about Dungeon Synth music and now it's gone forever. I wanna make a podcast one of these days of just me like recommending people music. And it's like it's I I, I have way too many you know, I mean you're watching this video now, and I'm stuttering, and I'm, like, having, like, these mini breaks over and over and over and over and over again. Who the fuck wants to listen to that? I need someone to fucking bounce off with. But I don't usually have anyone to really bounce off with. Plus, I'm a pretty dismissive fucking guy. <laughs> if anyone has ever talked to me and interacted with me, I'm fucking dismissive. And, like, I, I talk in, like, in very short outbursts. It's like, hey, man, how you doing? Why are you talking to me? And that would be like the end of the conversation. <laughs> so, so even then, if I do have a second guy, it, it, it'll just be like the worst fucking conversations because I just don't want to fucking talk to this person. <laughs> so the podcast is out of the fucking table. If I had a lot more charisma and if I had a lot more knowledge, I would definitely make a podcast with someone. But I'm not because I'm an absolute mess of a person. So, let's see, Zolo, Dungeon Synth, what else is there to talk about? What, what, I've been, what, what have I been listening to recently? I do want to talk about um, a lot of those 90s cranky bands. 
There needs to be more of that. There needs to be more, like, post-rock influenced rock. And not, like, broken social scene nonsense. Like, fucking th those 90s cranky bands. I'm talking about Jessamine and Datama and uh, Doldrums and other guys. Like, I don't know if, if Lab Radford counts, because Lab Radford were basically a post-rock band. They were, I mean, you want to put, like, a fucking label on them. They were drone rock, ambient rock. And then there were other cranky dudes, like Low, and then and then around the time where Wendy and Carl and Pan American came in, they were going, like, fucking full-blown ambient, and now everyone knows them as the big shot ambient label. And, you know... I, I love them as that too, but there needs to be a label that specializes in that. Like, dissonant rock music. That, that's what we need in this world. We need dissonant rock. That's what, that's what needs to come back. Zolo and dissonant rock music, man. That, that's what needs to fucking come back. We need more of those two things in our lives right now. Everything's been fucking revived nowadays, man. You got fucking garage rock. You got post-punk blues rock fucking synth pop came back all these fuckers listening to fucking purity ring and coverches what the fuck you know so you got all that bs going on no one wants to fucking revive zolo you know fucking no one wants to wake up fred frist do a rock and opposition revival one of these days we'll, we'll grow up we're gonna see the reincarnation we're gonna see fourth wave post rock we're going to see fourth wave ska. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm going with. I don't know where I'm going with this at this point. <laughs> oh, God. What am I fucking doing with my life anymore? I, I can't even think of a sentence. I can't. I'm so done adulting. Am I right, guys? <laughs> I'm so done. <laughs> Anywho. Oh, I have been checking out, um, this, there's this one cool Zolo band. This has been Zolo cast with the Loser of 08. It's Ring. It has one of the dudes from Cardiacs, Christian Hayes. Um, he wasn't too prominent in Cardiacs. He was playing guitar. Um, if you ever seen, uh, All That Glitters is a Mare's Nest, he's the, uh, guitar player with the short-ish uh, black hair, short, long black hair. Um, yeah, that, that guy. Anywho, he ha ha was in a Zolo rock band called Ring, and they have some fucking tight stuff. He was also in a band... Oh, wow, that blanked out on me. Okay, well... He was, he was in another band as well. <laughs> now you know why I don't have a podcast. Because I can't fucking talk about things as straight as possible. I'll just fucking forget, man. I, I can't do that shit. Fuck that, man. I can't fucking do that. So that's kind of about it. I don't know what else to really talk about, you know. If you want to fucking discuss about life. This has been Pillow Talk with the Loser of 08. Hope you've enjoyed it. Cast with the loser of 08. I'm currently parading through through traffic here. It's around 7 a.m. ish, 7:40, 7:45, uh, and I'm I'm most likely going to be stuck because it's Northern Virginia, and everyone in Northern Virginia loves to talk about how shitty the traffic is. Like every conversation always dwindles down to like. Man, man, fucking traffic sucks, am I right, guys? <laughs> That's the only way we can connect. That's the only way we can find, like, a solid ground with each other. Like, everyone has different point of views and whatnot. We can always say, you know what? Traffic fucking sucks. So, yeah, there's that. It is cold as fuck. This is a musical channel. Might as well talk about music things. There's gonna be some rough cuts from here to there, like in the last video. 
So, what are, what are some things I want to talk about? They are talking about pretentious hipsters listening to the people, the, the, the music of my people. Because here's the thing. For those of you who don't know, I'm Burmese. I'm not... Everyone wants to guess that I'm like every other ethnicity that, that has brown people in it. No one ever guesses Burma or Myanmar. No, no one, because it's just it's just fucking there. But so I I appreciate it and I like it when people listen to the music of my people. That's that's cool. But I hate it when people react on how fucking mind blowingly amazing some of the music is. Because to me, I have feel so desensitized over that stuff. Because I was listening to it when I was like fucking three years, three years old. My mom and dad would put it on, you know, their cassette player and whatnot. And so a lot of that music just does not amaze me as much as all these fucking pretentious hipsters are, are listening to their fucking nong nong and marmar a tapes, and it's like. Why are you people so amazed by this? This isn't anything new. It's just poorly recorded. It was recorded in some shitty ass shack that was called a studio. The only thing unique about it was that it was sung in Burmese. If I made a fucking bullshit, psychedelic, lo-fi indie, fucking hypnagogic pop rock album, and I just sang in my language, these assholes would eat that shit up. You know, you're listening to, to... To me, you're listening to fucking Dad Rock. If I went back to Burma, and if I saw a fucking teenager or college student like you assholes listening to fucking Steely Dan and being amazed by fucking Aja and all that stuff, it, it, it would baffle me. <laughs> and that, that that's how it is. That's the, That's... That's how it is to me. That's how I look at it. By the way, a lot of the Burmese youth are really succumbed to... Not succumbed. But they, they eat up a lot of K-pop. They love Korean culture. They love K-pop. It's crazy. Like, the last time I've been there, it was just... The youth really, really fucking loves K-pop nowadays. So, yeah. If, if you're expecting a new generation of Burmese rockers... Yeah, it's just gonna be fucking K-pop warmies. So yeah, just wanted to get that out of the way. All you fucking stupid pretentious hipsters listening to those sublime frequency compilation tapes. It's just fucking it's it's dad rock. And dad rock isn't a bad thing to listen to, you know? It it, it really isn't. You know, it's it's just another fucking buzzword in on the list of on the goddamn trash bin of buzzwords that people fucking use all the time. It's just amazing that people think that this, that some of this music is otherworldly, which I guess you could say that, when I'm just fucking looking at this from, like, from my point of view, and just, just perturbed on how people would find this music good. <laughs> I find this, I find it good too, but... For, for different reasons. I find it good for nostalgic reasons. You people find it good because you, you'll never listen to anything like it ever. Ever. Fuck off. So, but hey, if, if you like that, if you like Burmese music, if you like Burmese classical, if you like some of that mono stereo psychedelic rock, I won't judge you. I'm gonna laugh at you, but I won't judge you. I won't judge you. If, if my... If this camera point of view is, is a bit weird, I apologize. I mean, th this isn't a viewing video. <laughs> this is for listening purposes only. This is basically audio visual, uh, visual audio. You know what? Fuck it. It's <laughs> this is an audio visual, visual audio visual. A V V V A V. Yeah. It's 7:30 a.m. I woke. I legitimately woke up. Probably. 10, 10 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, like I just woke up, brushed my teeth, put on whatever the fuck clothes I could find on the floor, and then just left because I have to go to this little meeting for for meeting purposes. Oh, the sign that the sun is shining on my face. Oh God. Oh my God. 
What else is there to talk about? Well, since I'm outside, let's talk about outsider music. Outsider music is, is great. I enjoy outsider music. Honestly, my appreciation for outsider music is what got me back into black metal, in my opinion. Um, I got into black metal initially as a guy that just really enjoyed, like, atmospheric black metal. Ooh, that's sun. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, man. Anywho. I just... One of those, you know, young fucks that enjoyed atmospheric black metal. And, you know, Atmo Black Metal has, has, be, has this fucking huge boom in this decade, so that's pretty neat. But, you know, I was listening to fucking Burzum Philosophon and Burzum Fist, and those are the only two fucking albums I would listen to. I was trying stuff like Dark Throne and Dark Space and, and Summoning, and I was like, man, you know, these don't, these don't hit me. These don't hit me as well. And then after that, I just sort of brushed it aside. For, for, for a while. And then around September of last year, I listened to Vampires of Black Imperial Blood by Mutilation. And really, a lot of those, those, those Black Legion, Lay Legions Noir guys, like, that's, that's what really got me back into black metal. Because to me, they were just outsider, outsider metal. Black metal's already an outsider's genre. So to have an outsider-ish aesthetic for an already outsider genre, to me, is pretty fucking cool. I like a lot of that oddball stuff. I like a lot of that weird stuff. I've been listening to, 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 to some oddball black metal recently. Uh, Inward Scape, uh, Totostep, I believe, Totostop? Uh, what else is there? Etheric Void's pretty outsider -y. Uh But besides that, yeah, a lot of those Lady Leagues Noir guys, and I'm going to botch a lot of these names here. Mutilation, Vlad Teeps, Valkytre, Movat, Akan Katre. What else is there? <laughs> uh, I was going to say Zelda, but Zelda was not one of those bands that really got me into it. But really, uh, again, a lot of those guys helped me get back into black metal. And outside of music is great. I love outside of music. I love shit like Dale Johnson and, and Wesley Willis and, and the list goes on and whatnot, but it, it, it's, a, it's a style of music that really gets to me. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm not a good musician, and I want to have <laughs> a good output, and these guys are doing the best they can, and that, to me, is fucking awesome. And that, that's how I look at black metal. These are a bunch of fucking misanthropic, nerdy fuckers. <laughs> sometimes nerdy, sometimes misanthropic, sometimes Satanist motherfuckers. They're making, you know, the best music that they can. They're giving it their best. And that that's pretty fucking awesome to do. There are some outsider music. There's some outsider musical albums and whatnot and artists that I'd like to talk about that aren't some of the more like, known guys. Like the two that I mentioned. And Jandik and Wild Man Fisher and the Sword. Uh, there's this great great outsider singer-songwriter album called At Last by a West Virginian man simply called Wayne. And if you can find that album anywhere, I've got my link off of some random blog spot that I, I don't know if I can find anymore. But there, I believe there are some songs on YouTube if, if you can find them. Wayne At Last. And it's Wayne, from what I can gather, was a guy that used to hang around uh couple of bars in WVU and he loved hiking he loved to hike I believe and he would hike near the Mexican border and there are a few songs on his album that where you know he speaks Spanish or I guess he sings Spanish so maybe that claim is true maybe not I don't know it just adds on to the legend does, does backstory matter in music that, that, that's a whole other thing. But Wayne, Wayne at last is is a stupidly solid outside of music album. It's just this eccentric West Virginian man who's just it can get a bit emotional at times. You know, there's always a, there's there's loads of character in it. It's just it's just chock full of this guy's character and it's great. Uh, there's another one called The Avent Grandpa by Marty. It is a three hour compilation. It's up on archive.org if I can 
I, I need to go and find that and link it to you guys. It is three hours of this old man. I want to say he's in his late 60s. And it's just him messing around with a fucking Casio keyboard. And boy, it is great. It is That is some good outsider shit, man. Marty's the Evan Grandpa. Fucking love that stuff. It's just, like, I, again, I love outsider music like that, man. Outsider music really fucking gets to me. There needs to be more of that, but we live... I don't know. I think the t- I feel like the time has passed. But then there's guys like Lonnie Holly. For those of you who don't know, the Sandman, Lonnie Holly, fucking awesome guy. Uh, he's released a couple of albums in this decade. Just this really awesome as fuck experimental psych soul stuff. My the sun's gonna shine in my face here. Oh boy. Oh boy. And just Lonnie Holly is fucking awesome too. The Sandman. He also has a documentary called The Sandman's Garden. And, yeah, he he's a guy that builds statues and sculptures out of trash. Just a really interesting man in, in the art world. So, yeah, but, you know, nowadays, outside of music is being dominated by acts like Viper the Rapper and Little B. And I love those guys as much as anyone else. But, you know, I... I I enjoy serious outsider music more often than the guys that a lot of people can like joke about. It's like, <laughs> isn't this ridiculous? Isn't this funny? <laughs> that, those are my preferences and whatnot. So that's cool. So yeah, what else is there to talk about? There really isn't much. Outsider music, black metal, Burmese music discussion. No, nothing too much to really talk about. Anywho, I'm... I'm still going to be stuck in traffic for a good 15-ish minutes. This was a nice nice way to pass the time, if anything. Uh, a lot more blackmail to talk about, but I, I'm way too forgetful. <laughs> That's why I have RYM. RYM is a great place to catalog. I, I don't like most of the people on there. The community can irk me at times. But I, I like going there to catalog music that I, that I want to listen to. Because I'm I'm a forgetful guy. I'm a guy that that tends to forget a lot about things. If you saw the last video, the pillow talk video, then me trying to remember what Dark Star was, the the, the second Christian Hayes band. I, I just remembered it today. I'm gonna edit those later on today. But uh, it, it, I, I'm terrible with memorizing stuff. Even even some of the best stuff, I'll I'll fucking forget. So I need something like that to, for me to remember, because I listen to all this shit, and it's always hard for me to, to, to really, really get to it, you know? So, as much as I don't like RYM, I, I like it because it's, it's a great place for me to catalog some of the stuff to listen to, and memorize some of the stuff to listen to. You guys should check that out. You know, my, my five stars aren't that amazing. It's like the typical generic stuff that you'd expect me for me to have five stars. Boris, Cardiacs, the list goes on. But I have some stuff if if you want to check that out. Especially like black metal and dungeon synth and drone metal bullshit. Stuff that I'd like to listen to. <laughs> um, so yeah. What else is there to say? What else is there to say? I guess that's it. I'll see you. On the side. I might do a final update. So check check for that. So, ooh, bye bye. Ooh.